Hello everyone and welcome to June's garden tour in our little secret garden. So it's been quite a while since we, you know, showed you what's going on in the in the little secret garden back here and we decided, you know what, it's time's flying away and June is going by really quick, so let's go ahead and do it. Um, excuse my voice right now. I've been under the weather. That's why we haven't, you know, I, I haven't been doing a lot of videos. Um, Ambrose is going to be, you know, behind the camera. Yep. So he wants to say <laughs> hi. Hey, guys. And um, let's go ahead and start. We're going to talk a little bit about what's been going on, you know, um, since really um, early spring. Um, it, it just seemed that it was taking forever for, for things to get going, a lot of the plants. And a lot of things are still kind of going slow, um, especially annuals. Um, we did plant some new things in here. Um, I have been moving things around. Um, and we'll go, I'll, I'll go ahead and fill you in everything, everything from what's good and what's not going that great, what I'm worried about and the great things about it. So let's go ahead and start right there and talk about someone that everybody always asks us about a lot. So that right there, variegated, beautiful foliage that you see is a wolf's eye Japanese dogwood tree. And that is one of Ambrose's favorite trees that he actually, you actually got it, what, two years ago? Yes, two years ago. In a local nursery around here. And um, it actually puts on very, very pretty white lime green um, flowers during um, the beginning of spring. Um, that was something that we, did, we really didn't get to see, at, maybe just a few because of how cold it was still get, um, um, the weather was in spring, in the beginning of spring. Yep. So what we probably got to see literally like we three, saw, four. Yeah, there was only a few blooms on here. Unfortunately, a lot of stuff in here got some actual winter damage that we were hoping didn't, but we'll show that it did. throughout the garden tour here. So talking about that, we're going to go ahead and show you what, what did that, the hydrangeas. So here I have, a, which I think this is one of the mountain hydrangeas. It's not in bloom and it should be, it should be in bloom right about now. So as you see, I left this so y'all could see the old wood and nothing came back. So usually, you know, I'll trim it back, clean it up once I know that, that it's not going to be um, producing any blooms. Um, you know, it cracks like that, you know that it's no good. It's not going to flower. Um, I did leave it like this for now, but I'm very, you know, they're rebloomers, so I'm very hopeful that it's going to do something for us coming um, um, the, the end of um, summer or fall when they come, you know, they rebloom again. So then there's a window box that Ambrose planted not long ago on a video, and that right there are impatience, red impatience. Um, that's a new impatient, I that, think. I believe it's called Scarlet Red. If I'm incorrect, I will put that on the screen. Uh, but I'm loving those impatients. Uh, they're a nice mounting impatient, especially for this window box here. And these uh, boxwoods here looking great. Going to give those a little trim. But what else do you have in there? The ivy that we've had in there? Yes, I left the ivy this past winter. I did not pull it out. Um, I just love ivy. That's one of my favorite things, fillers to use in the garden, how it's very small and it's a garden where... Um, it, it's not that old. It it actually fills in really good and gives good good fill in for it. Yep. Then we for have the, the some area. Uh, some Tarina wishbone flower there. Beautiful some color. Diamond frosty forbia, and it's all looking good. I actually put a hooker there. Um, oh yes, that's the uh, apple teeny. Yeah, was we put that last, last fall? fall. I think I planted that's that. That's an apple teeny hooker. It hasn't it. flowered yet in there. And then I left in here, which I love so much. Um, if you remember the name oh, of that Oh, there's a one. wire vine in there, yes. Wire vine. So that one started coming back just recently. It's looking yeah. good. But that's the window box right there, guys. Absolutely loving the way this window box looks. Yeah, and you're, you're going to go ahead and see a lot of little things here and there. We're still uh, moving around things and potting up things. There's always something going around in this little area. Always. I, always, I have so much fun in here. Ambrose always laughs at me. He's like, what else are you doing? So, for instance, I have a hooker that hasn't been planted. It's just sitting there. Um... I, I think I like it there because I haven't moved it, so yeah. it might just stay there. And then we have um, um, the hostas. Yep, that we one there is, what is it, Woolala? Woolala. So this is a Woolala hosta, just like the one we have in the container. And in um, the beginning, they were starting to, we, we didn't have, you know, um, what was it, any of the birds or anything around to, to, to eat up all the little insects in the beginning. So, yeah, 
Yep. We had little little insects. These were some of the first leaves, and they were getting eaten up. Um, but, and then well, um, the flowers, which yep. they actually flowered recently. Love to have the hostas and the carex grass that I love to have in here. We actually planted up new carex grass because um, some of it didn't return, yep. which is weird. It's supposed to be, you know, um, a grass that comes back. And it was, I don't know, it was really, really cold this winter. We have some of the caladiums that I still haven't planted on that side. Um, not sure if you want to go ahead and show them what's going on on the opposite so, side, or you want us to continue? Yeah, we, we can show the path real quick. So as you guys know that have been following us for a little bit, we've always had some water problems here. And uh, we've put in some gravel and some stepping stones here. And this is what it's looking like right now. Um, just showing you guys what it's actually looking like right now. Um, there's really no sense in putting any more gravel because it's just going to build up to that barrier right there. So it'll completely wash out the whole walkway if we fill it up anymore. But what Angie wanted to show you guys was this side of the garden, which we did a lot of work in. Um, Angie loves to make this look like a like an actual woodland path, and I, I I love it with all the you know all the mulch in there and all these shade plants. Everything's looking great. Do you want to talk about what's in there? Yes, what we planted in there are caladiums. Those are new caladiums actually this year out in garden centers. Which that one is called, if I'm correct, explosion. Correct. Um, caladiums um, from Proving Winners. Yep. And then you will also see, we'll go back and talk about those in a little bit because we didn't get to show yeah. this planting. We were, we just haven't been feeling good, so we didn't get to show all the plantings, but we went ahead and we had to do the planting before it got too late. Um, and then what else do we have here? We did plant some baby tut right there. Yep, some baby tut in there. There's baby tut, and then there are different types of hostas in here. Yes. That one got transplanted not long ago. Yep. I can't remember the name to that uh, one. But that I one love I that believe color. is called Coast to Coast. That was in a very, I very shady color. spot and yeah. uh, kind of really tight next to another plant, so it didn't really push out the way we expected it to. Um, that's a Diamond Lake Hosta, correct? Down, yes. Diamond Lake Hosta. That one's growing out a lot better than this one here. This is the same, a Diamond Lake Hosta. And what was the reason for this one? Was the, the bird seed, huh? What do you mean the bird seed? The bird seed that was growing around the basket there. Oh, the yes, inside. yes. So we have a bird feeder right above this spot right here. And these birds just love to throw the seed out of that. And so it kind of had some seed growing in there and prevented this hosta from really spreading the way we wanted it to. The, the mulch has helped. I didn't want mulch in the beginning. I was going to go ahead and do a, a ground cover with some other type of plant. But we went ahead and put the mulch. And it, it helped a lot with the, the, the seedlings not coming back up of the food. Yep. Um, but anyways, let's go back to what we don't have here anymore. <laughs> so in the beginning last year, we went ahead and planted a couple of astilbes. And as you can see, we only have one. Yeah. So some of the plants that didn't come back, it's because we ended up getting a new pup. Um, we have a new German Shepherd that he's going, what, this is his full year? He's about a full year now, us. yep. Charlie and Charlie, well, he, he did some damage in here. Um, good to say though that he's behaving now and he's doing a lot more better. And yep. our garden is, you know, back to normal. Um, so what else? Oh, the reason that we have certain plants that I, I, I love to plant here, Carrick's grass and, and, and the little tut grasses is because it, it used to puddle here a lot. We did have a big, big problem with this area staying way too wet. So in the beginning, the we ended up trying to plant grass that didn't happen so we went with that instead but th these kind of plants helped a lot to soak up all all that extra water the the funny thing is that the other day we weren't going to plant the caladiums directly in there what we were going to do was put them in little baskets put it with with soil and put them in the ground um you know with little pebbles so they can drain on their own but when we were making the holes in there, we, we noticed that um, there was no puddling of water underneath yeah. anymore in the soil, which we were finding a lot that when we, when we used to in the beginning um, plant in here. So I'm going to say that we're good. We went ahead and planted them. We took the risk and we'll keep you updated on, you know, the caladiums, how they do. We, we do have extra caladiums because um, we went ahead and did plant them by, oh, yeah. from bulb. So we have some extra ones just in case. Yep. So let's go ahead and continue over here. Here's another one of the, I can't remember the names to this one, and I love it so much. This one's I love starlight. the lace cap. Yep. Look at that, how pretty. And this is Olive gave, gave me right now. 
this one is a rebloomer though, so I'm hoping that there's gonna be some more blooms it looks coming very up. Very healthy. It grows very on old healthy. and new wood, so hopefully uh, we get some blooms. The initial set of blooms definitely froze. Um, yeah. If you guys have been following us for some time, you'll 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 remember the big snow apocalypse we had here, and uh, it just continued to to stay cold for a while. Yeah. So a lot of these buds did freeze. So let's see. Keep you updated. We'll do more videos and show you what's going on with the hydrangeas. And then the roses. This is Olivia Austin rose. Um, we love a lot of David Austin roses. We, we love to grow them a lot here. So another thing that happened very early on in, in the beginning of the growing season in spring was immediately the, the takeover of aphids. Yep. Aphids, um, what comes next for us? Um, so, soft light. So soft light starts to... Aphids, soft light. And, and then these Japanese beetles that just No, there's love. another one that thrips. Oh, thrips, yeah. So we get it all in that order. So we do spray with with an organic spray, which is IV Organics. With once we start noticing that that, that the plants start to push out, yep. um, you know, fresh growth leaves, that's when we start spraying everything, right? But it started to rain. The the spring rain comes and the roses just keep coming, and we have to wait for the spraying. And before we know it. We come outside and there's already the first leaves and as you can see yeah they so, end up getting attacked and tattered and this is this is where what the soft light does yep so right now they don't have soft light anymore yeah as you can um, see all the new growth is looking healthy right now uh, yeah and like angie mentioned the unfortunate thing about being able to keep up with the spraying and and the insects here is that it just constantly rains and so any new growth that comes up gets quickly attacked because by the time we come out here to spray I mean, it's been raining a couple of days, yeah. and, and that those those insects are already out before, you know, before we even so, have a so chance to spray. So because we have the rain, we have been seeing a little bit. Because um, somebody had asked me if if we don't, that it looks like we don't get any black spot. We do, we do get black spot. Now I don't worry too much about it. Yeah. I do come out and remove some of it. We do do uh, we do our, our our what is it called our routine um, spraying, yep. you know. But I'm not this year. I told Ambrose, I'm not gonna go crazy about it. That's Things that are always going on in the garden. Yeah. I just want to enjoy it this year. How pretty is she? Her flowers are a little smaller now. It is, like I said, it hasn't felt that hot, but I guess the roses are feeling it a yeah. little bit. And we've been having rain like almost what every every day, I want to say. Pretty much every day. So it's been a little bit, I'm going to say, would, would you say it's been a little crazy for roses this it has. year? Oh, it definitely I, has. We, we, I think last year was a lot better. Yeah. Um, so we're going to show you here Gertrude Jekyll. And that's what we're saying, that it's been kind of a rough year for us. Um, Gertrude Jekyll, you know, had a wonderful, wonderful year last year. Yep. Um, and right now, it, it's actually coming into bloom. This is the time that it's starting to do its second flush. Yes. So, You can see yeah, one. It, it's, there's one right there. Yep. You can see it got attacked by the soft fly, and it has a bunch of new growth. Yep, there's a lot of new canes right there shooting up. Yeah, and then if you can see right here on the bottom, it's very, very bare. Now, some people don't care to have it full right there. I do. I I don't know if that was too loud. There was noises in the neighborhood, guys. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Okay, so I don't know. I like, I like for the wall to be full of roses, but we didn't get to it in time, and it just, you know, it went up. We were just busy, whatever the reason. Yep. But you know, if you want to go ahead and make sure that it, you know, is going to fill up with blooms down here, make sure that you get right to it because before you know it, it just starts doing its own thing. Yeah. And then you miss out on having the blooms here. So we might be able to fix that. And, and as it's growing more, Kane's just Ambrose is the one that. Yeah, we'll make a, it. we'll make a more lateral down here. That way we get some more. Uh... Some more canes growing. Ambrose doesn't really care for for having them down here. I, That's I, what I don't. I know. I know it. It would look absolutely beautiful down here. I, don't get me wrong. It would. It would be nice to have a whole flush of blooms down here. But because it's a secret garden, and we kind of, I think, vertical right here by the door is going to be a lot better. I would rather see all the blooms above the door here. But definitely in the future. I mean, when we move, we're gonna. We're, this is gonna get pruned back very, very hard, and we'll yes. move these containers with us. And so at the next house, we'll definitely do it the right way as far as. Uh, training all these canes laterally. So for now to make up with it, so I'm not just staring at that bare wall. That's why I have Olivia yeah. right here. I had her in another part of the garden, and that's why I moved her here because she's a little taller. So yep. just a little trick, you know, out there, a little tip in case y'all have something going on like that. Get something, another rose that's a little taller yep. so it can bloom for you there. And here I just have my little pots. 
That's all I do. I have a bunch of little pots on the side. I have um, ivy. I love ivy a whole, whole lot. I just have it in a regular little basket in there. Um, I, I know that it spreads like crazy. I'm always on it. That's one thing I love about it. I like to come and just mess with it and, yeah. and tweak with it and make sure that it doesn't take off on me. And then th these are containers that I love to have for winter, yep. early spring, which are, um, what are these called again? Those are uh, Lenten roses, the hellebores. Yes, the hellebores. So these are hellebores. And then again, I love my crazy foliage, which this is vinca, variegated vinca, and it does its purple flowering. Yep. I, I love to have hooker all over the place. Oh, yeah. I love green hookeras. I love purple hookeras. In here in the secret garden, I like to keep it a little bit more toned down. So I use, I don't know, I, I like to use a little bit more calm colors on, in foliage so that, that, that way the flowers, you know, when they flower, when... Uh, hydrangea flower, roses flower. There's just those yep. those little bits of surprises that all of a sudden, you know, come come up for us. Um, and then there is one of the little um, inkberry hollies. No, this is a holly holly, this not is the inkberry. I'm yes. thinking inkberry because I was trying to remember his name. This is a male holly. This is a castle spire. Yes, castle spire, and this is a male holly. So another thing that happened to us when we had a winter, um, he got winter burn really bad yes. winter damage really bad um i thought we were gonna lose him he went all dead from the center the good thing about oh, it's coming is back yeah it's coming back is i it? went ahead and took a big chunk out of out of there yeah um there was none of this new growth i it just looked horrible yeah i was so tempted on going to get another one but i was like no you know give him a chance and you know they they the good thing about hollies is they put on growth really quickly oh, yeah. so He's fine, you know. We did lose a female one. Yeah, we did. Um, right. We had two, and you'll see the other one in a little bit. Okay, so. I'm gonna ask a question that everybody asks. What's that behind you there? Oh, so this right here is Ambrose Japanese tree that we've had since we've had before this we one? moved here. Ooh, I wanna say five years now? Yes. Five years now we've had this, and I absolutely love this. He loves this tree. Green seedling Japanese maple, because everybody asks what the typical yeah. name is of it, and this is a green seedling Japanese maple. I would love to have a red one, but for some reason I love the green. It just it, it speaks more to me for some reason. And I if absolutely we had love more it. room here, we we definitely would. We yeah. definitely would have another one. So that's something that. And we got some. Uh, the we, future. We do have spider webs growing in here, guys. And, and we and, love that. And we love that. We keep that here because. It, it controls because this is a secret garden. Again, this is a very uh, cool and humid area at the same time at different times of, of year. And all these insects in here They're are, garden kept, friends. are kept in check. They're so. garden friends, yeah. They help the garden. Um, and then here, oh my goodness. How I love this hydrangea. Yes. So this hydrangea right here is an oak leaf hydrangea. It's one of the first hydrangeas that we get um, to see bloom in our garden. This right here is Gatsby Moon Hydrangea. And how gorgeous is this? So as you can see, it starts like this, very creamy white. Yep. And then it starts to show this beautiful lime color. That one is beautiful. I'm going to go color, around you here. Which very reminiscent of Limelight Hydrangea, Panicle Hydrangea for anybody that, you know, is familiar with that Panicle Hydrangea. This is like a cross between, I see it as a cross of that the is a hydrangea limelight. It is just gorgeous. And I did repot it um, last year. We put it in a bigger pot. Um, we actually received it from Pervin Winners. Yeah, this was a quart size. And I'll, I'll yeah, link the video did. up here right now when I actually they planted this, this so you can see um, how fast this one grow. Uh, we it did this one, little. I want to say three and a half years ago. Yes. It, was, it was a year that we moved from North Carolina. Yes. So in three and a half years, this is how big it can grow. Um, we transplanted it, and I don't know if, if that's what caused it to not bloom as much, no. or was it the location? I know why it didn't bloom okay, a lot. So they, 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 they can take a lot more sun here in our zone 7B. So I have it really close by the door. This is a north area. It's, it's mostly, um, you get a lot of the morning sun in the, mor in, in the morning. Yep. And then during the whole day, we get the dapple and, and, and shady. And this is a very shady area towards the, you know, through, through the whole day. So definitely could have used a lot, a lot more sun. I'll show you why, because we have another one, and that one is doing amazing. Um, and another thing before I keep going, we have th this garden here is, is a container garden, most of it. Like all this wall right here that you're going to see is container. It's all in containers. So one thing that I want to always tell everybody, plants 
you know, obviously will do 100% way better planted in the ground the way they're intended. And containers are going to stay a little bit more smaller. Yep. They probably won't produce a lot of flour. It's just not going to be the same as in the ground. Nope. Um, and you got to make sure that you feed them. You know, you feed oh, yeah. them and you take care of them and the watering. So we'll do all that on another video later. Um, let's get going with the tour because I just love to show you the arbovitis that's another plant that everybody's always asking us about what is that back there and it's arbovite that is one of my well that is my favorite evergreen um reason being is my favorite evergreen because it has a very calming feeling and scent yes. i love the fragrance of arbovite it just there's just something about it that i just love so much um we have a camellia right there let me move the chair oh yeah and here's so I always say that the first hydrangeas to bloom in our garden, um, and let me repeat again because I don't think we'll go ahead and put it at the bottom. We are garden um, zone 7B in Quantico, Virginia. Um, and the first thing to bloom for us in hydrangeas are the oak leaf hydrangeas. But yep. this time around, last year, we received two, two hydrangeas from, uh, from our friends in Prairie and Winter's Color Choice. Um, so we can go ahead and try out and let y'all know how they're doing. And they're doing amazing. So this is who actually bloomed for us before the oak leaf hydrangea. Yep. This is Candu hydrangea. So Candu hydrangea, I hope I'm not wrong because I forget. It's a mountain hydrangea. Yeah, this is Candu. And the crazy thing about it is that this, this hydrangea actually also was all covered up in snow had a very tough winter oh yeah um, they're very hardy that's why i don't understand why the other ones didn't you know uh, come back flowering for us around this time but the thing is that this one went through the same thing and it's flowering for us mm -hmm. the first one to even flower so the special thing about can do is that it will set buds all through the stem so no matter what, if you're the whole, if, if everything froze, the dead, the, the old wood froze, is not going to give anything. It will bring out new growth, and all through the the stems, it's going to set new yeah. new buds, and you won't lose at all in the season flower. So isn't that amazing to know that there's actual hydrangeas like yeah. that now and days? That's amazing that that one does that because I noticed. I'm, Right away, it started putting out buds, even when the snow was starting to melt and spring was and starting to come. And it's a lace cap. Yeah. So how beautiful is that? Yeah, those flowers are absolutely beautiful. It, it gives a, like a strawberry color. You can also, you know, change up the, color, the soil and, 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 um, and it'll turn what into like a oh, lavender. Oh, yeah, it was a little bit more lavender when we first got that. So just so you guys know, when, when you plant hydrangeas in containers and you want to keep them a violet or a blue color, when, like the way when you first get them, you need to put some acidifier inside that soil to keep it blue. Because when they're in containers, yeah. obviously all the water and it's going to wash away that pH and the pH is going to, it's going to get to a point to where it's no longer going to be blue and you're going to get these colors, which is... Beautiful. We absolutely do not mind it I at all. I love this color. If it was in the ground, we'd probably put some more um, um, acidity to it to make it a little bit yeah. more blue. So I had to turn it around and flip it around because, as y'all yeah. can see, I have, you know, when you have a container garner like this and a garden like this and you keep it, you know, I, I have a lot of plants here. I have to be messing around with them so they can all get sun. So the leaves were, you know, not getting enough light. Yep. And they were, um, you know, getting that, that very yellow Correct. color. Correct, yep. Um, yeah, but I, that's that's one that I think we're going to make sure in the future to get uh, have more in our garden for sure. It's a wonderful one. Another one we received last year is this one right here. Um, yes. And I think Ambrose knows the name to this one. It this just started one flowering is for Let's us. Dance Big Band, and I love this one. It's a mob head hydrangea. I absolutely love it because it's a mob head, uh, and I don't know how much bigger it would be planted in the ground, but I do know it's, it's, a, it's a three by three foot Yes. Um, hydrangea and I love that these blooms are not overly huge they're they're cluster size they're beautiful looking uh, it maintains a beautiful shape and as I, you can see there's I'm, I think it's supposed to be there they are supposed to be a little bigger okay well the bloom so they it just started blooming yeah so we're gonna see if they start to spread more and like I said We'll be doing more videos and, so you can see what's happening. Yeah, and, with, and, and these are rebloomers, guys. Like like we said before, these are rebloomers. As you can see, there's more buds forming right there. These blooms actually started, what, about a month ago? Yes. So and 
these guys, these two did spend winter here as well. Yes, yes. And they came back for us. So that's good to know. They're, yep. they're new varieties of hydrangea from per winter. So it's good to know that they're actually able to handle, oh, yeah. you know, the very bad cold weather. Um, and then what else do we have here? This guy right here, I had to bring him. I tested him out in a warmer area, and he did not like it. So this is Lemony Lace Elderberry. And we did not get to see our elderberries. I, we have a couple in the garden. We didn't get to see them this year bloom. It, it started, one of them, the, the dark one started to bloom for us. Yeah. And then we got a cold snap. Yeah. <laughs> and the flowers, that, that was it. So, but, so this guy, um, one of the questions that we get a lot is, you know, what kind of lighting does it like? We are in a zone seven B and it, it can get hot for it. Yeah. The, the sun can be intense. So I try to, where it's like, liking it is um, where it gets morning sun and yeah, yeah. afternoon shade. Yep. So it's coming back. I went ahead and put it here. Um, he was towards the end over here by the wall. And there's where the sun lasts more the whole day. Yeah. And he did not like it there. So I moved him here. And then over here, we have another oak leaf hydrangea. Oh. And this one, we did get to, um, we also potted up in a bigger container. And I'll let Ambrose talk about this one because this is a rescue. So uh, I'll, I'll try to link this one up on top also so you guys can take a look at it this if you want Gats to. Gatsby this Pink. is Gatsby Pink. And uh, this was, no kidding, a, a TLC plant that I found at the nursery. Look at that color. I literally paid $5 for it. Not going to lie. A three-gallon container, $5 oak leaf <laughs> hydrangea. And it looked terrible. Uh, when I say terrible, it, it looked like it wasn't going to make it. And so um, you guys always ask what fertilizers we use, what potting soil we use. We use Espoma because we truly believe in the product. And I put some Biotone. I use some Espoma potting mix. And it's been, what, two years now yeah. since I actually got it. And two years. this one has outgrown this one right here. Yes. And Angie you can talk more about, like she said earlier, why that one didn't grow as much. And this one grew more it can take a little one. bit more light. Yeah. Um, uh, around noon, I think light hits it around noon, all the way till maybe one, yeah. one, one thirty. I, it has sun and uh, out here, and it's loving it. Yeah. And if I put, if I do put it a little bit more farther out, the 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 flowers will scorch. Yeah. Um, I do give it a lot, a lot of water. That's something that they need a lot. Hydrangea. Yes. yes you know, do. water. So that's you know. Um, but I think the other one would have flowered a lot more if I had it towards this area. I, I too. believe so too. Um, um, but absolutely beautiful. Has a lot of foliage. Um, hopefully this guy. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's still determined on what we're taking with us and what we're not. But hopefully this is one that makes it because it'll go in the ground and absolutely look beautiful. And then right here we have a rhododendron. So when it love to have rhododendrons, they're evergreen, and it, they give you know they they. They give that green during winter, which I love, yep. winter interest. And it's done blooming. Usually we have it somewhere where it's showing, where, where we can see it more. And yep. what I do is I go ahead and start moving things around. It's done blooming. So now he's going to help us fill in for this, for other areas where, you know, yep. where I'm, I know we're going to have more color that comes up with the hydrangea. And I still haven't finished with the annuals. Um, I still got a couple of things that I'm going to put in here with annuals yep. that I'm still playing around with. Um, you'll see that later on. And then we have more caladiums down here. These are very pretty. Yep. Which ones are those again? Um, flatter me. Flatter me. Yep. So those are um, heart to heart. I just potted flatter these me. up. Yeah. Beautiful. I just potted these up. These are very, very pretty. I love that. Very. They remind me of elephant ears. They do. They grow so big. The caladiums that they... Sometimes we get asked when we when we post um, the uh, pictures of yep. palladiums on on Instagram and Facebook, they ask us what kind of elephant ears they are, and we're yeah. like, no, that's 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 a caladium. They're huge, and we have little things like I told you. I have here are the the annuals that I like to always always have around in here, and I haven't been able to get to planting them. Angie and her annuals are like Easter eggs. <laughs> the, They're all over the place. The, the, these are um, impatience that I, uh, some patients that I love to have everywhere. They're so easy because they they love, they can take sun and shade. Yep. So that, that's why I have it tucked in here because I gotta get a pot and you know, that never ends. And then here's where we start getting to the plate, the, the part where I'm still working on, like always, 
Ambrose laughs at me. This is a part where we're always working on. So he, it's my little what, shame. Uh, I wouldn't call shameful it. Area. I wouldn't call it a shameful area. I think we we purposely stay away from this area because of the the the, uh, the ground obviously on this side, and we kind of want to want to make it look nice back here without sacrificing some of the other stuff. Um, but this is where we do put a lot of stuff. We had the potting bench at one point there. Yeah. Uh, we had a couple other things there, but uh, we did add know. another arborvitae. So I am doing something different again this year, yep. and hopefully I get to make it more appealing for us. You know for the rest of the season. Um, so yeah, we have that arborvitae that I went ahead and put there that we had by the door actually. Mm -hmm. And I planted him in here. Um, took us forever to find a pot that matched. Yep. <laughs> that was the same one as that. Thank goodness we found one or two. Um, and then this is the other, um, what was holly. it? Holly. Holly. Yep. This is a female holly. She's looking, she's just starting to fill in again. Yeah. We lost the other one. She just, the snow. I think it was too many days, and I, I just don't understand. The plants are very hardy. Uh, most of the plants that we have here are actually down to zone four, five. Yes. Um, and we're a seven, and it's always recommended to at least, at least do two zones below your your zone in yeah. hardiness. So you know, for winter they can actually yep. be able to take it. Um, in our containers, we always try to get containers. And I'm so sorry if y'all heard that. Is was that loud? Yes. That was very Maybe. loud. I don't Neighborhood. Know. <laughs> it's very close here, so we can hear it all. Yeah. Um, and where was I at? Um, yeah, our containers. Um, we always try to get containers that are going to be able. To, what are they called? Um, frost, um, frost, uh, frost proof, proof containers. Um, and, and, very and, well and, insulated containers. And as we learn, uh, somewhat heat proof from melting, because uh, in certain spots, the reflection off a house, off the ground, off of anything, can cause some of these resin containers, especially to to remelt. So with having you know a container garden, we ended up just learning so much about containers without even thinking we were going to go that route on learning so much about what kind of containers to have for for what the type of garden you have to. Uh, maybe another type of video we can do later on over containers um, but yeah um this the this female holly is doing really nice the good thing about it is that it it you know we, when we had both of them it was just beautiful seeing the birds come around it does produce um red berries yes um with that one male holly that we have over there that guy can actually um um how many like five i think you can pollinate five, five and within a 50 foot radius yeah so, so. It's, it was really nice to see the birds come around. We had the birds all through winter here. They had a place to hide. They're still living yeah, they're, in the arborvitae. Yep. <laughs> so it, it's been really fun having, having yep. you know, these little plants around here for them. Not just for ourselves, but for them too. And then I didn't take care of somebody. This right here is a very, one of, the, I think it's the smallest one of the smallest Annabelle arborescence type hydrangea. Yeah. And I actually have the tag here. This is invisible wee white. Yeah. And look how gorgeous this is right here. It it starts to get um it at first it blooms very, very white. Yes. Beautiful white. And then it starts to go into a blush pink. It's just so dreamy. I, I love it so much. As you can see here, but we had Crazy rain, rainstorms, yep. crazy wind, and it just flopped it everywhere. And it's still a baby. We had, we got it what last year. Yeah, so yeah, we did. So it's still on the floppy side. But I think Ambrose doesn't even know yet. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a bigger pot. I think it, I think it would help it a lot to put it in a bigger More pot. More than likely, yeah. But what I like is that these kind of hydrangeas always, um, no matter what, as you can see, it's it's producing more, and we'll have more flowers soon. Um, and then right here is one that we have. We had three of them. This is a panicle hydrangea starting to come into bloom. These, this is a Sinfandel hydrangea. And for those of you guys that have been following us since... Since the beginning. Since day one, <laughs> this is the first panicle hydrangea that I think we did video on, is it? Uh, yes, that we did a video on, yes. Yeah, and we did three of them, and they look gorgeous. We had them on a porch. It was so pretty. And, you know, we passed along the other two, and we went ahead and kept just one because, you know, we don't have a lot of space. Yep. Um, but it's coming into bloom, and, you know, I haven't repotted it since then. And it's kind of an experiment, too, to see how much these guys can 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 take. Yep. But um, I don't know. I might repot it still. Yes, I am still repotting things 
it's been very nice here and it's very cool still the weather um it's been raining a lot that's when i take advantage of doing that and i don't know well i'll go ahead and see if, if i get to this one before this before it gets hotter but look at the pentacles it looks so pretty of the symphony doll and then um oh my poor rose so how this area i'm always working on and i just i literally neglected her yeah um this is lady garner and i left her for too long under in that corner no no sun she grew very lanky and no leaves yeah yeah so being real with you guys you know it it, it just life things happen and you know Sometimes you don't get to get to things really fast. And it's okay. It's okay. There's no stopping the Lady Garner, though. It's still going to give us some beautiful blooms, um, even though Angie over here decided to not take care of her this year. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to move her out to the other side of the house in the west area where there's a little bit more sun so she can yeah. start putting on, you know, those leaves. This poor lady is all naked. <laughs> um, and then back here... Um, a lot of limelight hydrangea. There's a limelight tree hydrangea back there, and then there's, you know, one in a shrub form right here. Um, I decided to go ahead and transplant this one back there. We had it in a pot yep. earlier on this season, and I went ahead and put it there. Um, I just want to see all white back here, um, especially because of the, the red yeah. of our oh, home. Yeah. That's the garage back there, by the way, guys. So I just love that. And then we have Pearly Gates Rose, Climbing Rose up there, which she... My goodness, that she put on oh, she did. a show forever a show. In, in, in the beginning of spring. And I'm going to say mid-spring, too. Yeah. She was just, yeah. she's taking a rest, but she is a rebloomer. Yeah, she'll so. put on some more blooms soon. And then also we had, um, if, it, if I'm correct, the I Clematis, so, yeah, Jolly the Clematis. Good. Yep, Jolly Good. Oh, my goodness, a Jolly Good. It did awesome there. It, it did awesome. I don't know if y'all can see. Just, just not long ago, I think this the, week, actually. To, I'm sorry if I'm making y'all dizzy. <laughs> But they're starting to it die out already. It's it's in spring blooming. Yeah. So it's something that I've never thought I would have in a gar in, in our garden. I know it sounds weird, but um, I never saw my mom plant clematis. So it's something new that I learned about, too. So I'm kind of getting an addiction to them. Um, but we will leave getting more clematis for, I'm guessing, when we're out of oh, here. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and Definitely plant a whole lot. We, we have two more, more that we have been enjoying, but... They can get addicting. They're very pretty. And then this is little lime. Um, yeah, little lime does not stay little. Little lime is little is, is a little version, the small version of limelight hydrangea. And little lime can really get big. Um, but, you know, not as big as limelight, but it, it puts a good yeah. size. Oh, yeah. So this is who I had in there. But I wanted something more bigger up there. And I said, let's go ahead and layer you know, just put that back there all in white. And then right here, you know, white here too. I did pop in some potato vines in both of them. So that way we can see some dark foliage um, come out very simple. Well, um, I mean, before we close the video out, there is one little lime that you completely miss in this tour that we need to show them. Oh, I, yes, before we close the video, we're almost done. We'll go ahead and, and I'll show you something that just looks so pretty. Um, but yeah. I have potato wine in there and hopefully it grows. A lot of the annuals are, I don't know, this year it's, I don't know. I, and I've been hearing everybody say that too. They've kind of had in, in, in the zones cooler than ours. And I think in seven, some of you are struggling on getting the annuals going and we fertilize yeah. like every third watering. So we'll see what happens. Yep. And then my hookeras, I can have hookera everywhere, every, everywhere. I'm gonna go ahead and jump over here. You want me to stay down here? Or Wherever you want to go. What do you want me to do? You can stay down here and I'll, I'll walk my okay. way up there. So, um, apple tree, I'll let Ambrose talk about that because we are not getting apples this year, so unfortunately. So, the Espinor apple tree, um, that one basically, it, flowered. It, it, it had buds and mm -hmm. they were starting to flower and then it froze. And all yes, the flowers fell off. It was so sad. Literally, all the flowers fell off. The kids were so excited to, to get, you know, apples. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, this, this is our first go around with the Espeller apple tree. Yeah. So um, knowing what to do with it uh, as far as when, when winter comes and, and those late frosts come is something that, that now I've learned and now I know. 
Um, but yeah. they, they all froze off. They all died, just like much here in Washington, D.C., where they a lot of the cherry, uh, the cherry blossoms froze as well here in Washington. So it was a very um, weird. It was a spring. weird, weird spring. Weird, and weird start weird. to spring. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. still weird weather right now. Um, what else can? But you know, the the thing about it is the structure it gives. I don't. I know yes. I don't have it. You know, like on the wall and everything. But yep. it, it's you know because we have a temporary garden, but it's still giving something to the garden. It's in the center. You know, the wall, the back, right here, and it it, it still looks nice when I look out the window yep. from and, the house. And, and without all the energy going to any any fruit or anything like that, that's why you see a lot of that elongated growth on top there, which will definitely get pruned this fall. But mm -hmm. all the energy is going into the foliage and the and the growth here. So that's what you're seeing there. So then I decided um, not long ago, you know, what did I want to go ahead and plant under there? Um, I didn't want anything crazy. I just wanted to be very subtle. So like always my go-to lemon coral sedum, which that sedum, it can grow anywhere. Shade, yep. sun. Um, it even gives little, little yellow flowers. And then I popped in some potato vine. Um, can not remember the exact name of that potato vine, but I just wanted to see all one color, something just very... Just very subtle. Yeah, yeah. Um, nothing crazy because, you know, <laughs> I do have a little bit of crazy everywhere with with other things. I just wanted to make sure it was simple. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have our little pots up there of, of I have other hookeras with with my um, um, uh, my ivy. That's yep. that's little ivy that for some reason, guys, I cannot find in garden centers. I've been go, um, I think I need to make another trip to the local um, garden centers that we go to. I love that. I've been trying to do a wreath yeah. with that type of potato, uh, uh, not potato vine, of, of um, um, I ivy. ivy, English ivy, and I can't find it. So, you know, let's hope that I can find it. And then we have um, right there um, Lady of Shalot, and I know I can't say it right. Um, that's the best I'm going to say her name. Um, you walk around this Lady way. Lady of Shalot's been blooming, as y'all can see. Her blooms are already about to... Um, that fade away, yeah, they're that fading away. But gosh, does she give that beautiful, beautiful orange. Yep. And um, she's just starting to come into her second flush. It, her, the thing is with her, I, she blooms all the time. Yeah. So this is her second year with her. And we trimmed her so much last year. Yeah, she we grew did. like crazy. And we had her on the west area. And this girl, when she, she does this whole octopus cane thing, as y'all can see, it's already doing it there. Yep. So that's why it's great if you want to have it as, as um, train it as a um, climber, because it's a really fast grower. So that's something really nice about that rose. So yeah, and then I planted a little bit of um, alyssum down there that I'm waiting for it to. Yeah, the alyssum is in there as well. So we have, a, you know, very weird lighting in here, which there's a lot of sun towards the, the day back here. So that helps a lot that I can have other things that like a lot of the, like annuals that like a lot of the sun. And then, you know, I still have pots right there where I'm trying to pot up like evergreens. I have a little sprinter um, um, boxwood there yep. that you can see the top of it right there a little bit. Um, I'll get to that one soon. And then I have over there, that's Claire Austin Rose. Yep. And she, she bloomed for us this, the beginning of spring. She really put on a show um, which was crazy because, you know, I hear a lot of negative stuff about her. And, and yes, I'm going to say I, I, I would have gone with another rose if I knew about her. She's a very slow, slow grower. And yeah, it's a very slow grower. She um, takes a while. Yeah. She takes a while. So if you if we had her forever home, I would be OK waiting for her to do her thing. But, yeah. you know, now I know But I haven't been able to get rid of her. I don't want to. She's, when she does bloom, it's nice to see her. And her flowers don't last a long time. Maybe, what, a day or two? Yeah. They yeah. fall apart. They're very pretty, like a lemon white, yep. lime yellow. I don't know. It's a very pretty um, white. It's just so pretty. Okay. And then let's come to the bed right here. Um, I have a little th little things that we're playing around with still and that I'm going to show you later, yep. later on. Um, um, we do have our hostas here. Um, we just did a little bit of planting, so I didn't go crazy this year with annuals. I went ahead and just did more, dotted up just a bit of impatience, of, I mean, of the sun patience in there, and then added some of the, what was it, like a couple of days ago I yeah, added Yeah, it was these, a couple of days ago. Which the this Silver is, um, Falls, the Chondra. The Chondra, yeah. So I got to trim it a little bit so it can bush again, you know, bush out. 
Um, and then and we have a fern there. And then we have, Ambrose just started to get um, going with the pond too. The pond is actually working. I just had to adjust it because some of the water was falling out the side with the rocks. And one of the things that he loves to put inside the pond is um, baby tut. And yep. as y'all got to see, we had it on the bottom. So that's a great thing about baby tut. Baby tut, which is pepper's grass. Yep. Pepper's grass loves water and it can be a pond plant when you, you know, you can, you have it in a basket. Yeah, it can go straight it in, in the there. water. And it, it can take all the water you know it can. So that's the reason why I put it over here on the ground as well. So we won't have too much of the water there. Um, so got some. So that right there is Shadowland Wee Hosta. Oh my God, they're so pretty. Uh, beautiful foliage, has that, that ruffle foliage right here on the sides. Absolutely love it right there. And then that fern back there is called Lady in Red. And it's growing nicely. I'm loving that fern. It's beautiful back here in this, uh, and before area. we get going, that, that pond helps a lot. And I'm always telling everybody, it's nice to have something. Um, we like to have a lot of hosta and things like that. And when you have a shady garden, you're going to have, what is it, like the snails, the little critters that come around oh, and yeah. eat up. And the great thing about it is that when you have a little pond, you end up having frogs. And the frogs end yep. up eating all those little guys that come around and munch oh, yeah. on, on the foliage. So down here we have, it's one of the new um, geraniums. And this one is cho what Chocolata. Is Choco Chocolata, is that we'll what you were saying? <laughs> we'll put the name. <laughs> yeah, we don't know, guys. We're chopping up names everywhere. But yeah, we just, I think I got this one on Mother's Day. Yeah, you did. Right? We, we bought that one on Mother's yes, Day. Yes, Mother's Day at the Garden Center. What can I say? I, You know, that's to me like everything. Yeah. Okay. And then we have, um, we planted down here what we showed you already. Yep. Um, going back. Oh. We are, how can we even forget to show you these right here? So these are um, invisible Limetta hydrangeas arborescence. Oh, yeah. um, we have three right here. It, it's been raining, so they're drying out. They're flopping over right now. But gosh, they are so pretty. They start, with, uh, they start blooming um, white, and then they start coming into a very lime, pretty lime color. Oh, yeah. So we're still not there yet with the lime color. But oh, they're so pretty. and they. The one thing I love about arborescence, the reason I love growing them, they're so easy, of course, to grow. Oh, yeah. But the scent, the fragrance is just so, so pretty of them. And, you know, they just keep blooming. They're actually pushing out a lot more stems with, you know, with yep. blooms. And then back there is that other... Um, um, elderberry? Uh, elderberry, but that's... is What is the name of it? Black, black Lace? Black Lace Elderberry. Black Lace Elderberry. So the reason why it's not... If you can see right here, it's a little darker. It's supposed to be darker, yeah. but in our zone, we are a little more warmer, so we are not going to get it to be seen all dark. Yeah, that, that black it's color. It's going to turn green. As it's starting to mature, some of it is going to yep. go ahead and do that, and that's why I have it in more shade as as well. Um, and yeah, we missed the, the blooms. And then right there, I'm going to show it all, guys. I have down there plants that you'll be seeing very soon. They were gonna plant up yep. um, on video. And then up there, that is a forsythia that y'all got to see me show you this um, winter, right? Yep. Winter, early, early, early spring, late Move winter. Move back so you can see the what the um, entrance looks like here. And I just love, I, I love it. I told Ambrose, we received that one. So tiny, that forsythia. And it's just, I, I love it so much. I love the forsythia so much because of the structure it gives and because I, I want that little, I, it, it's such a small place and I call it, you know, our little secret garden. It just gives that special feeling. That's why I love, I love the way it, you know, all the branches, the wildness of it. Um, I always change the plants down there. I have hookeras in there and other things, ivy, and soon I'll be popping in something else in there, but that's why I love it so much. And I thought, why not, you know, let's go ahead and keep it and see if we take it along with us when we move from here. Um, so. It's coming towards the end of it. I'm going to go ahead and show you what Ambrose was talking about. And what he was talking about, oh, almost missed one hydrangea. This is blue jangles. Oh, yeah, blue jangles. Down here, which had it pretty rough with the winter we had. Yep. And as y'all can see, you know, we're still working on stuff. I have more things down there. But, yeah, he's he was looking worse than this. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, I don't know. Fingers crossed. Let's hope that puts, you know, a show for us later on in the season. So this is little. This is a little lime. In this little lime, I went ahead and trained it myself into a little tree. Um, it. What was it like when we got here? 
Yeah. It, I, it was it was one of the three little limelights that we brought with us from the from our other home, our past home, and um, I just went ahead and <laughs> told myself I I, I want to see if I can do it, and I did it. It's been what already a year. My God, no no. Since I trained it, I trained it the second year we oh, were yeah, here. Oh yeah, sorry. So it's been about two years. This is yeah. Second year. So I don't know. I love it. It's actually it has a very nice shape. These right here ended up popping up, but we'll cut them once they start to bloom. I do want to save those blooms, but it's full of blooms and it's doing really nice and I can't wait to see it, you know, look all prettied up, all flowered up. So guys, this is it. Um, Y'all have any questions, go ahead and ask us and, you know, go ahead and leave questions down below in the comments. Also go ahead and follow us on Instagram and Facebook um, because we also always share their, you know, daily things on what's going on in our garden and silly things with us here at home and the kiddos things that we do out in the garden and stuff and yep. angie angie always out here trying to figure out what else to put into the little space um let us know what's going on for you guys and what guy what y'all growing is is it still cold i know for some of you up north it, it's just been weird yeah um let us know what's happening in your gardens as well um send us photos to the facebook page too in our group um so we can see what you guys are doing and we can all chat there if y'all want to um, and yeah, I'll let y'all go. You have anything to tell them? Nope, that's gonna do it for the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the tour. So we did have somebody mention to us on a comment that um, they would like for us to put a video together of how this became, you know, how did we turn this little garden into what it is today? Um, and yeah, I think it, it's time. It's time to go ahead and do that. Very soon we'll go ahead and have a little sit down chat with some coffee and, and talk about probably go and look for all the pictures and everything's going to be oh, fun yeah. to see what it looked like when we first got here. Um, I know we didn't have a lot of crazy color um, that, you know, I, I, I'm i missing the hydrangeas blooming like crazy right now. Yeah. Just, you know, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, hopeful still that they're going to do something pretty soon as they're rebloomers. So thank you very much and we will see you later. Goodbye. Bye guys.